Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity again to be able to get up here and teach. I want to thank Pastor for that. And I want to thank all of you because if you didn't show up, there'd be no one to teach too. Amen. amen. Um, okay, so uh, I want to say it was like a year ago that I did the part one of this guy. Uh, and I remember at the time... Um, pastor was out of town that was when the crazy fires were going on in california and we were remember we had to have church outside and it was so hot brother tom you, where's brother tom is he somewhere it was so hot preaching that day i remember i just like the whole time just wiping my uh and there was like i saw horizontal lightning on the way to church for the first time in my life it was just like we we're all like pastor can never leave again because i clearly <laughs> The Lord's like, oh, okay, Gene's gone. All right, California, you can just fall into the ocean. Um, no, kidding. But that's how it felt. And then so today, there was an earthquake uh, where I live, and it was like the strong, I mean, it wasn't crazy. It was like a four point something, I think. But it was like the strongest one I felt since I was like 18 years old, probably. Enough to make, you know, Kirsten and I run and grab the dogs and run outside. So um, I think the Lord timed this well. So uh, you needed... Honey back then, and you need honey today. I, I, I wrote some, I wrote some th- you need it more now than ever, amen? I, I wrote some things down here in case uh, if, you, if you weren't able to take part in the part one, um, or if you just need a refresher. I know I did. Uh, I didn't remember all this stuff, so I'm going to quickly, I, I hope you can bear with me, I'm going to try as quickly as I can to review part one. And then we'll see how much uh, more we can get after that. But I I did put some notes here, so uh, you could jot those down. But uh, essentially, the okay, I'm going to quickly go through uh, part one here. So we looked at honey. Uh, We did a word study on honey. And uh, we saw the first thing we looked at was the makeup of honey. Like, what is honey? So what we found... The definition is it's a sweet vegetable juice collected by bees from the flowers of plants and deposited in cells of the comb and hives. Um, But let's see what the Bible says about it. So the word honey occurs 56 times in your King James Bible. And it, uh, it also appears in the form honeycomb. So it appears in two forms there. And what's interesting about this honeycomb is that it appears nine times in your King James Bible. And Joseph, you remember what the number nine represents? Number of fruitfulness. Number of fruitfulness. Amen, brother. Amen. So you got a a word here that is, by the way, honeycomb, nine letters. So it, it occurs nine times and it has nine letters. So just, you know, common uh, th- this isn't some magic thing right we're just doing a word study looking up the references and stuff like that it's all the Bible Amen. so the Bible would just reveal uh, to uh, just an open-hearted honest Christian seeking to learn something hey keep an eye out there's something fruitful about this word honey and so uh, that's further proven by the first mention uh, hopefully by now you know about the, f- the law of first mention in your King James Bible uh, first time a word appears in the Bible, that's going to set the theme for uh, its meaning and uh, throughout the rest of the book. Genesis 43.11 is the first mention. And don't turn there, but it ha- uh, in that occurrence, it has to do with the best fruits uh, that are brought in the midst of a famine. So when uh, Israel and his sons, they go to Joseph... So the best fruits are brought in the midst of a famine to the greatest type of Jesus Christ for a soon-to-be feast. So uh, that's interesting right there, right? And then uh, if you were to look at that passage, there are nine items that are brought. Fruitfulness. And... If you want to just stick it to all the, you know, everyone that says, oh, numbers in the Bible, you're just crazy. Four plus three plus one plus one is... We're, we're dealing with something fruitful here, amen? Oh, and then by the way, if you want to really, really upset him, 43 plus 11 is 54, which is nine times six. So honey, uh, just from the beginning, we find that honey is among 
the best uh, and most fruitful substances in your King James Bible. And uh, I, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through some of these other occurrences. That's why I wrote them down here. But uh, in uh, Proverbs 24, 13, it is good. Verse 14, it is the knowledge of wisdom. And when thou hast found it, there's a reward. Um, its sweetness is compared to the strength of a lion in Judges 14:18. Um, in Psalm 19:10, the honey and honeycomb are both used in that verse, and they're compared to gold and fine gold. Go check out Pastor's study on gold if you want to. Yeah, if you want to start to maybe link those up there, there's something interesting there. Um, Psalm 119:103, they're likened to, and they're second only. Honey is second only to the words of God. So there's something special going on here with this honey. Uh, if we were to continue, Proverbs 16, uh, it mentions the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. And in verse 24, uh, it, it's uh, pleasant words. So honey has to deal with words. Pleasant words which are sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Honey is very healthy substance. Amen? Um, in Ezekiel 3, it's called a roll. In Ezekiel 16, it's referred to as God's meat. You think this thing might be important? Uh, so it's God's meat. In Psalm 78, it's referred to as the corn of heaven and angel's food. When it's talking about that manna. Right? So there's, there's something interesting. I, I'd never thought it before to compare it with your, cross-reference it with pastor's gold uh, study, but I might have to go back and do that after this. This is already good. Amen? Okay, uh, in Re Revelation 10, it is bittersweet. The words of God are bittersweet. Um, Proverbs 27, 7, uh, it's the word of God, it's loathed. But it's also loved. It's loathed by the full soul, but it's loved by the hungry. Even the bitter things of the Bible are sweet to a hungry soul. Um, okay, so making our way through here. Uh, 1 Samuel 14, it's enlightening. Jeremiah 41.8, it's treasured. And Ezekiel 20, verse 6 and verse 15, honey is it's, uh, referred to as the glory of all lands. So this thing is a special substance right here, this honey thing. And uh, we covered it in the last part, but the application I'm making is that it's the Word of God. This honey thing has to do with the, word, the words of God. So we went through the makeup of honey, what it is. We also went through uh, the mockery of honey, what it is not. And that's very interesting. I don't know how you could find part one. You just have to, it's from a year ago, and it's just called Sunday Main Service. <laughs> I don't know, so I don't know if it's worth to go search it out, but uh, when we went through it, it was really cool. Uh, we looked at the mockery, what honey is not. And we saw that honey is not Satan's corn syrup. That's how I referred to it. Uh, corn syrup meaning, you know, that high fructo uh, fru fructose corn syrup, you know, that you put on your pancakes and it tastes real good. It's not, that's not honey. That's not good. That's just bad. It's bad for you. It tastes sweet. Amen. Um, Satan's honey, uh, go over to Proverbs 5. Let's, let's check this out in Proverbs 5 because there's a lot of really good stuff here in Proverbs 5. Let's see more here about uh, Satan's corn syrup, how it's a perfect counterfeit for God's honey. Ain't that just like the devil to have a perfect counterfeit lined up and ready to go? All right, uh, Proverbs chapter 5, we'll start in verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. So we're, we're going here about wisdom and understanding. Verse 2, That thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an, what? Honeycomb. As an honeycomb. As an honeycomb. They're not a honeycomb, but they, they drop as an honeycomb. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Verse 4, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. So, you know, we got a book that is actually sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
And yet Satan, he, and we went into the modern versions when we looked at this last time, modern perversions, he has his words of God lined up. And they might taste sweet, but they're harmful. Um, whereas the Word of God is bittersweet, but, it, but it's health in the end. Um, the, the words of the devil are sweet. Sweet as in honeycomb, but there is a bitter end to them. They don't taste bittersweet. They're just, just all kinds of sweet, but it ends up bitter. So we saw that uh, they drop as. If you're going to do any kind of Bible study, you need to know the words as and like. That's how God, that's how God teaches you in the Bible. Uh, so Satan's perfect counterfeit there, they drop as in honeycomb, is smoother than oil, yet in verse 4 it says that her end is bitter as wormwood. And in Revelation 8.11, don't turn there, but it talks about wormwood in the tribulation, right? How it's going to come down. And, uh, and it, in verse 5, her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. So while it's uh, acting as though it's going to give you words of eternal life, it's actually giving you words that are going to lead you to death and hell. Um, so you got to watch out for Satan's corn syrup. Uh, in verse 6, it leaves souls doubting the path of eternal life and ignorant of Satan's ways. Isn't that just like the devil? Um, movable ways that you can't know them, right? They, uh, they, they add stuff and take stuff out of these Bibles. Uh, Bible believers point it out. And then what do they do? The next revision, they come, oh, they, they put it back. They switch it back. You know, they clean up after themselves. Uh, movable, you can't know the, their ways. Uh, that's what you're going to, that's the, that's the honey you're going to find in those modern perversions. And uh, it is sweet to the taste. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there can be some stuff in there that, you know, someone can get saved. They can oh, learn. Yeah. They, can, they can learn some stuff. They can grow a little bit, you know. But just keep chugging that high fructose corn syrup and see if you don't get type 2 diabetes. Uh, whereas, uh, we'll get into some more on honey later. But God put a mechanism in the body to deal with honey. True honey. Um, okay, so I mentioned, uh, I mentioned wormwood. Uh, well, in Deuteronomy 32, 13, it says, And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. So once again, we see that their rock, which is really wormwood, is not as our rock. So what, stay away from that honey. Our honey is health in the end, though it might be bittersweet. There's, you're going to come to church and you're going to get preached at and it's going to hurt sometimes, Amen. that Word of God. But you know what? You'll, you'll be okay. Just swallow it down. It might hurt your tummy a little bit there, but it's good for you. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, yep. I'll keep going here. Perfect. So we're doing good on time. Um, I'll start to kind of wrap up the review here. Um, we also saw that Satan's honey actually is money. That's Satan's honey. That's what he cares about most. Uh, he doesn't care about the words of God. He cares about money. And uh, Satan's sinful syrup in Job 20, verse 12, is actually wickedness. Though it is sweet. Turn over to Job 20. I want you to see this too. This is a good one. Job chapter 20. You learn a lot about the devil in Job. Amen? Job chapter 20. And we'll read verses 12 to 17. And uh, keep in mind, the context uh, here deals with the Antichrist. So uh, look with me in Job chapter 20 and look at verse 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned it is the gall of asps within him. He hath swallowed down what? Riches. Riches. And he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. So Satan's honey... It's wickedness, though it tastes real sweet. 
Um, but his meat is turned. It is the gall of asps. And if you look at that word gall, it's like bile. It's your stomach's bile, which interestingly enough, it even bile has a yellowish color. So it even slightly might resemble, uh, you know, the golden goodness of honey. But uh, the, anti- the Antichrist, he, he swallowed down riches, but he's going to vomit them up again. And you got to watch out because his honey is the poison of asps. It's not real. Uh, I'm going to read this real quick. Deuteronomy 32, verses 31 through 33. For their rock is not as our rock. We saw that. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. So in verse 17, we saw, he shall not see the brooks of honey and butter. And it's so interesting, the King James Bible, it takes that word brooks, and it's pretty simple. You look at it, oh, if I take out the letter R, it's books. So you got, you got honey flowing all through the books of this Bible, brethren. And we're going to see a little bit uh, more about that um, coming up here now. Amen. So, okay, that's all for review. Now let's look at the... Uh, let's look at the mirage, or sorry, so uh, to finish the review, we also looked at the mirage of honey where it's not found. Um, I'm just going to briefly go through this, but we, we went through Jeroboam. He conjured up a ruse to have his wife disguise herself and carry a cruise of honey um, to Ahijah, but Ahijah, the Bible says, could not see be, uh, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. He was blind to the cursed cruise of honey that they brought before him. And we made the application, would to God, that we had some Bible believers in Laodicea that in spite of their age, their eyes were set by reason of the age. We, we know the age that we're in. So we're not going to fall prey to and we're not going to be suckered by uh, these false sources, these false honeycombs. We got the real thing, amen. So are you, the question is, are you going to the honeycomb for your honey? Uh, or do you got your head somewhere else? Are you in a, a different land? Um, okay, so I'm going to skip forward here. Let's start to look at some of the, let's look at the map of honey uh, or where it is found, where you can find it. So uh, in Genesis 43, 11, we saw that it, it was the glory of all lands, right? So one place you can find it is you can find honey in the land. And amen, uh, This honey, the words of God, part of the reason why we went through the mockery so much is because I want to drive home. Hopefully all of us here understand this, but maybe some people online. You can find the honey. You can find the words of God. It's not some uh, original manuscript that no one's ever found. It's not hiding in the cleft of the rock somewhere where no one can suck it out. You have the honey and it's flowing in this land, your King James Bible. Amen. So, uh, okay, so we got the, the map of honey where it is found. And so this one was actually, uh, I'm just going to skip four here. This one was part four. So map of honey. Turn over to, uh, let's see here. Turn over to Exodus 3. Exodus 3. So we got the map of honey. Where it can be found. Praise God, it can be found. Amen. Amen. Man, I don't got to go to some priest. I don't got to go to some professor. I just go to the land. I just go to where the source is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, So, okay, Exodus 3, 8. And it says there, And I, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land Unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. So not only, we we know there's a land, praise the Lord. There's a land where I can go and I can find the honey. I can find the words of God. It's not just any land, brethren. This land is a good land and a large. Amen. And it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Um, Interesting thing about that phrase, a land flowing with milk and honey. It occurs seven times in seven verses. So let me put here, I'll put uh, the land and I'll put flowing. 
and it occurs seven times in seven verses. Seven being the number of completion, amen? Perfection. Now, another thing that's interesting, if you just condense that down to milk and honey, so not a land flowing with milk and honey, which as I look at it is uh, seven words. Praise the Lord, I didn't know that before. Um, Milk and honey occurs 21 times in 21 verses in your King James Bible. And uh, the only exception is one time in the Bible it shows up as honey and milk. It doesn't show up as milk and honey. It's honey and milk. And in that occurrence, you have uh, Song of Solomon 4.11, and it's the bridegroom speaking of his bride. So it would appear that she puts the honey first. Amen? That's how important the honey is to her. All right, uh, go over to Exodus 16. Exodus 16. Exodus 16. All right. Exodus 16. Let's see more about the location of the honey. Where can I get this honey, the words of God? Exodus 16, and let's look at verse 4. The Bible says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And then look in verse 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So uh, another, another place you can find it is you can find the honey in the wilderness. The children of Israel were in the wilderness here, amen? Spiritual application. Praise the Lord. It, when you're in the wilderness of life down here, amen, right. you, God's got some honey for you. It's, and it's a certain rate every day. Did you catch that? It's a certain rate, especially for you, every day, every morning, that you need to go to get the honey in the wilderness. And where is it from? It's from heaven. The honey is, this is a heavenly thing. It's, it's not just a book. I hope anyone watching that, I mean, this thing, just like, it, this is a greater miracle than the manna from heaven. That was just, that was just raining down, like, in one location at one point in history. This, this manna right here was put together over a long time with lots of different authors. You know the whole thing, amen? It's a beautiful thing. Now, are you going to get fed? Are you going? Because you are in the wilderness, amen? We, we know we're in the wilderness down here, amen? Okay, um, don't turn there, but Numbers 14, 7, which that's another 7, 7, 7, quinky dinky. Um, it says, and they, that's Joshua and Caleb, spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. Have you searched for and found the honeycomb from heaven, brethren? Isn't that amazing? Joshua and Caleb, it says there, we passed through to search it. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So Jesus, who's the word of God, amen, uh, he's very fond of this thing right here and hopefully you are too hopefully you're searching the scriptures um joshua and caleb did and they got to get some honey out of it amen all right let's see here go over to numbers 11 numbers 11 numbers 11 that's one way to have a sweet walk down here with the lord jesus christ is get get that daily rate of honey get that spoonful of honey every single day while you're down here in the wilderness. All right, Numbers chapter 11. And let's start in verse 4. The Bible says, And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. 
Verse 6, but now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Wow. Maybe you're already making the connections there, huh? There, uh, observe that the mixed multitude, which uh, that has 13 letters in it, mixed multitude, <laughs> complains about the manna. And I never noticed this before, but you notice how it says this manna before our eyes. It just sat on the, you know, wherever you keep it at home, sat on the shelf, just staring you right in your face day in and day out while you're having a pity party and you're having a horrible walk down here. You don't know why God's ruining your life. And meanwhile, the manna is sitting right there waiting for you to go get it. But you won't go get it. So the mixed multitude, uh, they complain about the manna. They lust for flesh. And they remember six things that they ate in Egypt. Wow. A type of the world, amen? And uh, just a bonus, there's 18 words in that verse. So oh. go, go have fun with that. Go over to Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Hey, there's a book called Numbers. You think God cares about numbers? Why else would He number the chapters and verses, amen? All right, Numbers 14. Uh, look at verse 8. The Bible says, If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So here you see that the murmurer's problem is in verse 9, one of rebellion against God and His words and the fear of man. And this leaves them defenseless as in no shield of faith. So, brethren, if, if you fear man more than God and you fear the words of man, the mandates, if you will, more than you do what's in here, and it's going to cause you to rebel against something God would have you to do or not do, you got to watch out for that thing, man. Okay, number 16. This will be the last, our last little thing here in Numbers, but it's just there's so much gold. There's so much honey, amen? All right, number 16. Let's look at verse 12. Number 16, verse 12. Number 16, verse 12. And the Bible says here, And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Woo, man, that is some rebellion, amen? (laughs) And uh, this is actually the sixth murmuring of Israel in the wilderness. And it comes from the Levites, priests, who who accuse Moses, a type of Jesus, of taking them from the good land, which is where? Egypt. Egypt. Man, you talk about blasphemy, man. You talk about, they're accusing a type of Jesus of taking them out of the good land, which is Egypt. Man, I wonder if some Christians at the rapture might not do the same. They get up there, they're like, what are you doing? I was enjoying Egypt, amen? I could fly around down there. What do I need to fly up here for, amen? Um, So, uh, oh, and uh, by the way, in verse 13, in the sixth murmuring, there are 36 words spoken by the rebellious Levites. Six, 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 six. I don't know, six sixes, whatever I said. Yeah, six times six, amen? Uh, okay, go over to Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. This book, man, I'm telling you, the honey is there. If you'll just go to get it, if you'll just open the pages, if you'll look into the brooks, uh, you'll get the honey, amen? amen and we need it now more than ever, praise God. So many distractions in Egypt. That would take you away from the honey. Meanwhile, you're starving. You don't even know it. 
All right, Deuteronomy 11, and let's look at verse 9. And that, uh, Deuteron- yeah, 11, 9. And that ye may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. Now look in verse, I know we already went through that, but look at verse 10. Because if you're going to know what something is, you've got to know what it's not. Verse 10. For the land, whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt. You know where those manuscripts come from? you got to admit, that's, that's, that's at least kind of convenient for our argument, right? Even if you don't agree with it. Isn't it convenient that Egypt's always bad? And yet, that's where you say the honey comes from? How about that? That's not where the honey comes from. Okay, uh, it's not as the land of Egypt from whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and wateredst it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. Verse 11, But the land, whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Brethren, this land, it's a land of hills and valleys, right here. Not only historically, it takes you through, I mean, it takes you through the highest of highs for these characters, the lowest of lows, um, but it, it also, it says here, it drinketh the water, it drinketh water of the rain of heaven. So if, if you know this book's alive, and you know it is, and you know it, you know, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it cuts us, and it does all this stuff, that's not all it does. It drinks. Woo! This book drinks from heaven, and it's ready to just give you some. That's good, brother. If you want to find it, if you want to get it. And uh, this book, it spiritually drinks in the rain of heaven, which flows into the ground of your heart and feeds the seeds sown there. So you got to, you know, your body is a temple of God, right? Well, this thing's also like a garden and you got to, you don't water the garden and it's going to die. So you need to be coming and getting the good honey. Amen. Um, Okay. And in verse 12, this is the last thing I want you to see from Deuteronomy here. Uh, Last thing from Deuteronomy. 11 and verse 12. I want you to see this. You see how we, we continue. By the way, when I set out to do this study, I didn't mean to make it a King James versus Modern Versions. I did not intend that at all. The book did that. Amen, brother. Verse 12. Verse 12. Uh, so let's, let's start from verse 11 again. But the land whither you go to possess it is the land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Colon. Verse 12. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Wow. God's always got his eyes on this thing here. So you want to be seen by God? Maybe you should go where he's looking. He's always looking. He's looking in here. Sometimes I wonder if he just doesn't walk up and down through the pages of here just admiring his own His own handiwork, you know, like walking through history, but the pages at the same time. Amen. Amen. And and, and then and then and then and then you come in the morning looking for something, you know, and then he. Oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm walking through here, too. Come on. I'll show you something. And he gives you some honey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, brother. Amen. While the dew is still upon the roses. By the way, there's a thing called honeydew. I won't, not the list that the wives give the husbands, but there's another, there's, honey is amazing. I'll just, there's, I'll save that for another time. I, I don't have time to write all this down. So just next time I do this, I'll, make, I'll have to do this again for part two. But, um, okay, I'm going to quickly go through the other places you can find the honey. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 13, out of the rock. You know, the rock, rock of ages, cleft for me. Judges 14.8, out of the carcass of a lion. That's a real interesting thing to look into. Uh, 1 Peter 5.8. 1 Samuel 14.25, upon the ground. Job 20 verse 17, through the brooks of the promised land. Song of Solomon 5.1, through the garden of the bridegroom. Uh, From the honeycomb into the mouth 
under the tongue, into the ears, heart, and bowels, into the bones, into the soul. Brethren, you need this. You need to be bathed in it. You need, it, you need to be drinking it. You need it all over the place. I th- we might have talked about it last time, but uh, you know, uh, honey, it's like antibacterial and it doesn't spoil and it, you can topical, you know, you could apply it topically. It's good for all kinds of stuff. Amen. All right. Last uh, part we'll go through for this time around is the, uh, the means of honey, how to get it. The means of honey. So, okay. By now, uh, I hope this has been a blessing, but yeah. you know what honey is. Uh-huh. The makeup. You know what it's not. We saw the mockery. Uh, you know where to get it. We saw the map. And uh, now we're going to look at the means. I'll just put this here. The means of honey. And that is, okay, how do I get it? How do I get the honey? All right. Um, don't turn there, but Song of Solomon 5.1. You get, the me, uh, you get the honey, Song of Solomon 5.1, by coming. Is that complicated? You get the honey by coming to where the honey is. Song of Solomon 5.1, I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. Uh, Proverbs 25, 27. If you can turn there, great. If not, I'm just going to write these down. Um, Proverbs 25, 27. You find the honey, how, uh, how you get the honey. You get it by searching. Proverbs 25, 7 says, It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. John 5, 38 through 40 says, And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. So you gotta, you got to come to the word of God. you got to search the word of God. Proverbs 25, 16, By finding, by finding, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou uh, be filled therewith and vomit it. So by finding. And 1 Samuel 14, 29, by tasting. By tasting. Yes, sir. You see how easy the Lord makes it to get the honey? I mean, that, th- that manna that's staring you in the face every day, probably no more than... 20 yards away from you in your house, if you even have a Bible in your house. Uh, and all you got to do is you got to come to it. You got to search through it. You got to try to find some honey. What you, and you got to, 1 Samuel 14, by tasting, you got to taste the honey. Remember, it's bittersweet. Sometimes it's not going to taste so good, <laughs> but it's always going to be good for you. Not only do you got to taste it, uh, Psalm 34, 8, you got to trust it. Uh, 1 Samuel 14, 29 says, See, I pray you how mine eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. Psalm 34, 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Do you trust the promises of God? I mean, if, if you did nothing else good in your life but trusted Romans 8, 28, you wouldn't have a care in the world, man. But you don't trust. I don't trust. Don't please, Lord, don't make me trust Romans eight twenty eight completely. But, <laughs> but, but, but that's but that's the truth. If we truly did not lean unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledged Him, then He would direct our paths. We wouldn't have a problem, man. We'd be we'd just be going around just eating honey, uh, and everything would be good. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 13, by sucking like a child. Once again, I mean, a baby, they can't eat meat, right? They can get honey. Honey, I think that, I'm not a, some of you medical scientist guys, I think honey has like all the amino acids that the body needs to survive or something like that. I saw that somewhere. You know, I'll go into that later. But uh, trust it. Uh, uh, 
Deuteronomy 32, 13, and, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock. Sometimes you're going to come to that book, and um, I mentioned it last time, but Brother Randall and I talked about it. He's like, man, sometimes I, I'm studying, I feel like the Lord doesn't even show up for like the first hour and a half. But then you come across a rock where you see a little, oh, this could be some honey right here. And you know what you got to do? You can't be proud. You can't, like, you got to get down and you got to. <laughs> if you were hungry enough for the honey, you wouldn't have a problem sucking it out of the rock. Amen. But other times, we'll end on this one. Go over to Psalm 81. We'll, we'll start to wrap this up. Psalm 81. Yeah, sometimes, man, the Lord's going to make it hard on you to see how bad you want the honey. Psalm 81. All right, Psalm 81, and we'll start in verse 16. Psalm 81, verse 16, the Bible says, He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. Look at verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Some, the Lord wants to just dump. I mentioned this last time, but have, you remember those times you got to tell, okay, Lord, that, I tap out. That's it. I can't take anymore. You, I, I got so many dots over here. I got so much stuff on my shelf over here. I got so, oh man, Lord, this is too good. But please stop. And he'll just, he'll just shut off the faucet. He's not going to, you know, uh, waterboard you with the, the word of God or anything. He's a gentleman. He'll just, okay, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, uh, but look at verse 11. So he said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would none of me. That's some of your problems. You would none of the honey. You just don't want honey. You don't have a taste for it. Verse 12. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust. Wow, that, remember it said they lusted after flesh? Yeah, that's right. Lusting after Egypt? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I gave them up un unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies. Some of you got that, you got something you're going through, you've been going through a while, or some prayer that won't get answered, and you wonder why the Lord hasn't answered it? This is why right here. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. The problem is, most of the time, I think, you, won't, you just won't open wide. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I'll come to the book and the Lord will just kind of test my heart, see how, you know, how far I'm willing to search. But th it's not hard to find honey in here, brethren. Read a, read, a Proverbs, read a proverb a day and tell me there's not honey every single day. Amen. The hardest part about that is you want to keep your mouth shut when you read Proverbs. You, you just don't, you want to be quiet. But... Um, Man, I mean, verse 16, they were fed and satisfied with the finest, the, 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 the things that God would have done for his people. But they didn't want it. And, uh, okay, where else are we going to find it? So you got to open wide. Um, Judges 14.9, you can turn there if you want. But um, So you got to open wide. That's one way to get the honey. And then uh, Judges 14, 9, And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. Where is my... Uh, da, da, da. Went on eating. So you got to take it and eat it. Man, this is some deep Bible study, right? <laughs> you got problems that God can't fix, but you won't even take the Word of God? You won't eat it? Some of, you, some of you have excuses why you got out of that church yeah. activity, why you stopped going to church, yeah. why, you know, and whatever. You can deceive yourself all you want. But the fact of the matter is you refuse to do the simple things God requires of you in order to get the best, the glory of all lands, the best fruit. Like into gold and fine gold. 
this honey thing, man, I'm telling you, it's going to keep you alive. You're going to die without this thing when you're starving in the wilderness, brethren. Um, all right. Um, lastly here, as I close it, boom, on time. Praise the Lord. Um, don't turn there, but uh, the Bible says here, well, Luke 24, Jesus Christ, post-resurrection, what did He do? He w this is God, right? Yeah. He had enough sense to take and eat the honey. Remember when He appeared to the disciples and had the fish and the honey there waiting for Him and, and He ate of it? Um, Ezekiel chapter 3 says you got to hear the Word of God, you got to receive it, and then you got to go and speak it to someone else. Um, Ezekiel 3.10 says, All my words receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. And then in verse 4 it says, Go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So it's not enough that you just are just feasting off the honey yourself and you don't share it with other people. you got to get this thing out. I mean, we have a world of starving people that are getting ready to drop dead in the wilderness of sin. we got to get them some honey. Get, get them some nourishment. Pour it down. Help them get, uh, get the honey. Amen. 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 And uh, Isaiah 7, uh, 14 and 15, uh, you get the honey by refusing and choosing. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. You've got to refuse Egypt. You've got to refuse your flesh. And you've got to choose the good. Choose the honey, brethren. By the way, that's the first thing said about Emmanuel in Isaiah 7 uh, is what he would eat. So uh, you think this spiritual fruit here is important? It was important enough for him. And lastly, all right, you found the Word of God. You know where it is. You know where to get the honey. You know how to get it. You know what it's not. You got your King James Bible. Amen. The last way you get the honey is uh, Isaiah 7, 22, by staying there. Nice. The old preacher always said, this book will keep you from your sins or your sins will keep you from this book. You need to stay. You need to be still and know that I am God. Uh, for butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. That's what that verse says there. Brethren, we're a faithful remnant. If there's anyone that's going to make it out of this thing in the wilderness in these last days, I hope it's us. Amen. And it's only going to be us if we stay in this thing right here, all right? All right, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the honey that's just flowing out of the brooks of the King James Bible. I pray that this was a blessing to the hearers. I pray that you know, it may have been bittersweet to some of the online viewers, um, but that's just because they, they don't, and I don't mean this in a bad way, they don't have a taste for the true honeycomb yet, Lord. I pray that you would work on their hearts um, and bring them the truth, Lord God. Ha have them to taste and see how good you are, Lord God, that they might trust the honey that flows out of the rock. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen.